The Canucks travel to Music City, where they will look to find a spark to ignite the rest of the six-game road trip. Starting their longest trek of the season with a disappointing loss in Dallas, the Canucks focus on playing as a five-man unit. We need everybody. We need everybody to step in and play their role and start playing the way we were in October. Changing things up could be the difference maker as forward Zach McEwen and Tyler Grayovac get the call. I know what they expect of me, high energy, uh, you know, play with pace, you know, be physical and, and, you know, do what I can to contribute. The matchup marks a milestone for Bo Horvat as he suits up for his 400th career NHL game. A lot of talk today, all right? Let's be ready to start the game on time. It's this building, you've got to be ready to go. An intense and physical first period sets the tone for the game. Canucks get the puck to Pedersen. In front, they score! Levo back to Ember, long shot, tipped in! Tyler Grayevac working on the second power play, and it got his stick on that one, and the Canucks lead 2-1. to one. Leads from Miller, makes a move to the middle, G.T. Miller with a shot, scores! Oh. Just whipped it in past Rinnick. Another power play goal, three for three. The Predators get an early lead, but the Canucks are quick to answer back, scoring five power play goals, something the club hasn't done since the 2011 season against the Blackhawks. Wade Hughes, Elias Henderson, shoot, stop, rebound there, loose in! I think that might be Horvat, although Miller was in the vicinity. This shot knocked down by the glove of Marshall, couldn't cover. Now he reaches out, can't get it. Canucks come up with the puck. Pearson for the empty net. Scores! Canucks even their record on the road trip. What a game for Jacob Markstrom. we got to keep believing it. in ourselves and in our system. It, it wasn't pretty today, but it's a win. And we, we need a win. The team heads to Washington, D.C., where former capital Jay Beagle received the warmest of welcomes from Washington fans at the local practice rink. It would be the only time they would see the forward as a nagging injury would keep him on the sidelines. The earlier than usual start time and afternoon tilt didn't phase the fired up Canucks. With confidence high in the power play red hot, they had no problem getting up to face the Caps. Carries all the way back to the blue line. Miller, Pedersen shoots, he scores! Wow. Lifted top shelf. Pass, Verona with a step, in on goal, he shoots, first to the save, now from behind him, and Myers was there to clear it away, then it was shot wide. Alex Ovechkin, glove saved by Markstrom. Holding on for two periods, Markstrom and the Canucks force overtime. And after trading multiple chances, the Canucks would seal the deal in the seventh round of the shootout. Markstrom got him with the blocker. Bull Horvath trying to make a winner for him. Scores! It's one of those positions you want to be in. You want to be there in the big moments. You know, Marky was phenomenal in the shootout, and I wanted to you know, be the one to win it for him. So I was happy I got to go and happy it went in. afternoon game meant the Canucks could take an evening train to Philadelphia, where they looked to keep their wins rolling. The team has scored each of its last seven goals on either the power play or the penalty kill, matching the longest run of special team tallies in franchise history. And then the second unit, three quick clips here, just up, over, it's coming to the net. They got two guys down there. We'll be doing a lot of this stuff. They'll try to score. So 
So again, we want to make sure we get back just like this. Four or five guys to come back, stop that guy, grab the puck, and, they, and no damage done on the way back into our zone. Okay guys, so let's keep up the good work tonight, execute at a high level. A bright light on the injury front is the quick return of defenseman Alex Edler, who left the game early in the first period in Washington. Yeah, like I mean, I've had a lot of injuries, so I feel like I know my body pretty well, and today, skate went well. Hoping to help his team, goaltender Thatcher Demko will start between the pipes for the first time since November 16th. The Canucks get on the score sheet early, but after a slow second and third period, the team would fall 2-1 to one to the Flyers. I thought our goalie was really good for us tonight. He gave us a chance to get a point on the road. I thought we had a little push when we got down a goal, but it was too little too late. The club continues their tour of Pennsylvania, where they'll look to bounce back against the Penguins team they've yet to face this season. The return of a familiar face is a welcome sight as Nikolai Goldobin makes his season debut after getting the call up from Utica. Last minute goalie change would see goaltender Thatcher Demko get his second straight start of the roadie. Hughes follows up, Canucks have numbers, Quinn Hughes centers, Miller scores! The Canucks fell behind 2-0 in the first period before going on a run and scoring four straight. His pass back to Pedersen, shoots and scores! Number 10 gets to the goal, scores! Rebound, stop that as well, Pucks still lose, they score! Adam got that chance at home! It wouldn't be enough as the Penguins rallied to an 8-6 comeback, handing the Canucks their toughest loss of the season so far. Just trying not to be uh, too negative right now. Anytime you give up eight, you gotta take a look in the mirror. It's just not good enough. This could have been one of our best wins of the year. You know, you have a 6-3 lead like that with a power play and you end up losing the hockey game. It stings for sure. True learning experiences are never easy to swallow, but this young Canucks squad will have to do just that to keep their hopes of becoming a postseason team alive.